He's got me on a leash right now, you know, evangelist on a leash and I'm not fun. I'm tripping over myself. It's great to see each one of your faces. I'm going to tell you what God told me when I was praising. God said he's fixed some things in this church since I've been here last. Y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. Amen. I feel a different kind of a peaceful spirit than I did before. I felt, felt like there was some issues inside the church that God was dealing with and, and he's worked them out. And so y'all know if I'm telling the truth because y'all in the church, right? Amen. And I would like to thank the, the guest. I have not, they haven't really got, oh, she told me her name, but I forgot her name already. The one in the back right corner. It's good to have you here. And anybody else that's not usually here. Because again, I'm, I'm, I'm with I Thirst Ministries, which is my, my ministry that God has gave me. We are here to see the uh, walls uh, Satan has put up between denominations, race, religion, and infinite backgrounds destroyed for the saving of the souls of Jesus Christ. Because see, the devil has put so many different denominations in our way that we can't fellowship and we can't praise and we can't worship with each other no more because, oh, you don't believe this way, I don't believe that way. So that is one thing that, that our ministry, you notice, I don't know if y'all know this, but I don't think I am, but I'm not quite like y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I did go to this Lanier. I was the only white person in the band. So I, I kind of have some experience. Now my family on the other hand over there, they're they kind of getting used to it. But, um, but we're, 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 we're a traveling evangelist family. Uh, we preached in 37 different churches last year. I'm just wasting time for y'all find chapter 17 is what I'm doing. But, uh, and also... We have we preached at 7, 30, 7, 37 different churches last year. We have four, three, four, three or four already added to this year. Um, and God's starting to open new doors. I was even on the radio since last time I seen y'all. We have the voice of Bibb County, AM 1110. It was awesome. Um, so God's doing things in our ministry, and I expect to see new things every time I come to this ministry. Like my sister singing back there in the green shirt. Girl, you should be leading a choir. I don't know why you ain't. So God has told me to tell you that's your job. You better get to it. Amen. Oh, I heard a hey, hey. <laughs> so that should be a choir next time if it's just two people. Amen. Okay, chapter 17. I'm going to start with verse 6 because I want to bring out something in this verse and then we're going to scoot down to, to, to a parable. Verse 6, chapter 17, Luke. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed... Ye might say unto the sacrum tree, or the tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. Do you have this kind of faith? Did you hear what I said? I said, do you have this kind of faith? If that is the faith, faith of a mustard seed, that's some strong faith just to be of a mustard seed. So if I have faith of a lemon, or if I have faith... As a grapefruit, woo, what can I do for Jesus? See, when you start having a little bit more faith, then you can lay hands on people with cancer commanded to leave. You can lay hands on people who are demonic depressed and tell it to leave. It has to. It has to obey you because you have the authority. But you can't do that if you don't have the basic faith. I'm going to go down to this parable God has put on my heart. He's brought some other things out since I've heard it preached. On cha uh, verse, same, same chapter, I ain't going to make y'all go to different places this time. Verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And God told me to tell you about this verse. <laughs> as God passes through your church. You better listen. As God and the Holy Spirit, as he sends it down and it passes through your church and the waves of the Holy Spirit go through your church. Don't be like the, the nine we're about to talk about. Be like the one we're about to talk about. Because see, there's something about when he passed through. He passed through the city. Just minding his own business walking. And he said unto the unto, and he has he entered into a certain village. They met him. Ten men that were lepers, which stood afar. And they lifted up their voice and said unto Master, have mercy on me. And I'm pretty sure they were loud as they could be. But why do we want to give him a quiet praise? Why do we want to give him a little praise? Why do we want to make our petition known? Oh God, please help me. 
Oh, oh, if I'm hurt, God help me, Jesus. God heal me. God deliver me. God help me to my next level of anointing, God. Ooh, I feel like I'm trying not to preach right now. I'm trying to I'm trying to teach a little, but you know the evangel spirit, it don't let you teach long. But then, and then, and it says they lifted up their voice and said, "Master, have mercy on me." And when he saw them, he said unto them, "Go, shew yourself unto the priest." Shoe means show. They had to go show themselves unto the priest. And they came to pass that they went. And they were cleansed. They started walking towards the priest before even being cleansed. So when God says, and you ask for something, you better act like it's happened before it even happened. You better start praising him and thanking him before that disease is delivered. Before, before you are delivered, and say, thank you, Jesus. My wife laughs at me because I say I'm going to get a four-door truck that's paid for, that's a four-by-four, four, that is not red. Somebody's going to give it to me in my ministry. It's going to happen. I'm praising and thanking for it now. She thinks I'm crazy, but when I... Oh, just wait till it comes. I will praise, dance, and run around it. It's going to happen. Uh -uh, I'm being Pacific. God said be Pacific when you pray. I don't want no more red trucks. They wreck. <laughs> and one of them, and here, here's where it gets deep. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. When God does that little thing in your life, I said church that little thing in your life, like waking you up in the morning. How many wake up and say, thank you, Jesus, I got through a night. I did not die in my sleep. I did not hurt in my sleep. I have another day to praise you. I have another day to worship you. Where's my drummer at? Where's my drummer at? Okay, he's over there. Yeah, he try I guess he's holding back until I get going, huh? Ray, you asleep over there? Okay. He just ain't ready for me to go. He's enjoying the teaching. <laughs> and he answered and said, Where thou not be ten cleans, but where are the nine? So how many times does, does somebody come to God or one of us ministers, Pastor Davis, ask us to pray for them? They get a miracle and we never hear from them again. I don't even think they even say, Thank you, Jesus. They go, Okay, God did that for me. And then we keep yeah, on going. Yeah, you preaching that. Let me tell you something. When God does a little thing for me, I'm glorifying Him like it's a big thing. All right. When God pays that power bill, I'm glorifying Him like it's a big thing. When I go to an emergency room, hurting here and here, and they think I have a gallbladder, and they go, oh, well, we can't find nothing wrong. You know what I'm going to do? I praised Him. And then I said, well, let me ask you about the pancreatitis that they said I had last time I was hurting. They said, we ain't seen your pancreas ain't inflamed. We don't know why they said that. I said, well, glory. glory. Yeah. So see, let me tell you something. This, this one of the ten, he knew something. Man, I hope you get that battery fixed. This thing's driving me crazy. You found a battery yet? Okay. There. No, oh, Jesus. That man, the one that knew something. He realized something. He realized who the healer was. He realized who the cleanser was. He realized who saved him. He didn't realize. He realized something. He realized, wait, wait a minute. This man just changed my life. Give God to praise him. God has changed your life since you accepted him in your life. See, one thing about the anointing, one thing about accepting God into your life, you start to see changes. See, I'll tell you, there's some fake Christians out there that have not changed. But let me tell you today, if you see that Christian, you see that person, and they don't walk like they walked last time. They don't talk like they talked last time. But they are starting to look like Jesus. They're starting to talk like Jesus. You see the love on their enemies. You see them take their enemies' donuts, as my pastor likes to say. You see them do things. Like they've never done before. You see them constantly going to church where they put church before anything else. You see them lay down on their face and they pray to God. But see, and then you see, oh Jesus. You see them start to have things happen in their life. Some of us, 
will get jealous of that person. I don't know how they pray because I want to pray like them. But don't get jealous of material things. Don't get jealous of anything. Love is not jealous. Love does not envy. I'm going to praise with them. When my minister friends get an appointment to preach somewhere, I praise with them. I'm happy. And if I'm not busy, I'm there with them most of the time. And their heart found they returned to glory to give God, save this stranger. They call him a stranger because he was a Samaritan. Yes. The other nine was Israelites. They were supposed to know who God was. They were supposed to know who the master was. But they were like, okay, I got to cleanse. I can go to the priest and go back to my regular life I had, right? Just camping, you know. But here's the mother one. He's, he stops and something just comes over him. How many times in your life have you just stopped after God did something and you just do this right here? Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Thank you, God, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, God, for everything you're going to do for me. God, thank you for getting me through that storm, God. Thank you for not sleeping in the boat, God. Thank you for healing me, God. Thank you for redeeming me, God. Thank you, Jesus. When you realize what God did for you, your faith is going to grow more than a mustard seed. And they said unto him, Thy go thy way, thy faith has made me them whole. Whole. My wife, we were we were talking about this one time, and she said, Whole, do you realize what whole means? The other ones just got healed of their sickness. Yeah. This man, he got whole, made whole, which means everything that was bothering him, everything that, that the demonic spirits and the, the, the demons and, and, and the Satan was telling him about his life because he was sick are all gone. Yes, amen. This man was changed, supernaturally changed. Because let me tell you, God wants you to be forever changed. If you cannot see the change in your life, the devil's got blinders on you. Or you're not really being a true Christian. When your enemy comes up to you and says, will you pray for me? Oh, I've had it happen. One that's talked about me. One that's told me my ministry is not going to go nowhere. But they need what I got. And that's usually what happens. The person that's offending you yes, needs what you got. Yes. It may be money. It may be the anointing upon your life. But they need something you got. They hold your miracle. If you were to say, and this has nothing to do with anybody in here because none of y'all feel this way. I know that because I wouldn't be here if you did. But if you have an issue because I'm white or because because I have an issue because you're black. You may have my miracle. This man realized, even though he was a Samaritan, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit right now. Even though he was a Samaritan, he knew that Jesus had his miracle. Don't think you're in this church by no mistake today. God has ordained you to be in this house of God today. We are not big enough to mess up God's plan for our life. Just like those kids were not big enough to mess up their plan for their life. The other two probably got cleansed. They probably went on. And by, we never hear about them again in the Bible that I found. But maybe they got saved. Maybe they found the wholeness. But this one is what I'm focusing on. This one is what Jesus is after. He's after for you to be wholeheartedly about Him. He's after you to be wholeheartedly about what He does for you. You want to talk about something? Talk about what God's done for you every day. 
It may seem redundant. I have a friend named Billy Chapman. One day I'm going to see a pastor let him come. He was healed miraculously of pancreatic cancer, stage four. Stage four is a death sentence. You have three to four months, maybe two months to live. I did a paper on it in psychology for my paper of, of cancer. The man should be dead. I walk up to him and say, hey, Billy, you know you should be dead. He goes, I did. I died three times. But he, he, he realized something. He talks about that all the time. And the reason he does that is because he wants people to understand that that's the way he glorifies God. And that's, that made his faith stronger. Amen. Y'all mind if I go on my heart for a second? God's telling me to tell you, you may be going through a storm today. Amen. And right now in my spirit, I see Jesus sleeping on the boat. Hallelujah. And why he's sleeping on the boat is because he ain't worried about the storm in your life because he has control of it. But we worry about it, don't we? Amen. We shouldn't worry about the storm in our life. If we're true believers, we know God has control of every aspect of our life. And as He has control of every aspect, which means I have to praise Him in the morning, I have to praise Him in the evening, and I have to praise Him at night. Also, a song we used to sing a long, long time, I got to praise Him in the valley, and I got to praise Him on the mountain high. I got to praise Him when everything's not going right, sister. I got to praise Him when my past due balance is like $459 on my power bill, right? I gotta praise him when I have a car wreck. I gotta praise him when my daughter's having attacks at school because of her belief. I gotta praise him when my wife and myself are fighting our marital issues. Which God fixes that stuff. Amen. Our marriage has been better for a long time now. Thank you, Jesus. But the devil tried to destroy it. I hear God tell me to tell you right now if you're in a relationship, you're not equally yoked. You should live with that person and pray for them. And watch what God does. God is just doing so many things right now in my body that I'm just waiting for the Holy Spirit to tell me what to do next. Because I, I, I really believe that this message right here is so profound that, that it has so many aspects that, that where you've got to have faith to get healed, but then you've got to have real faith to realize what He did for you. You've got to have real faith to realize that He saved you. Yes. That He healed you and He redeemed you. Yes. You've got to have really faith when everything's crashing around you. Yes. Because see, I've learned something. When everything starts to crash around me, once I get through it, I'm going to be just like Job. I'm going to get everything back. Yes. Plus more. Yes, now. Thank you. Thank you. He just took me off the leash. <laughs> okay, honey, you ready? Oh. Uh, since I seen y'all ask, God has put a little bit of comedian in my, my ministry. Is that okay? That's all right. That's all right. Y'all can thank Jehovah Shalom for that. My home away from home. Can you turn this one up a little? And God's just telling me to tell you as you're going through a storm in your life. These guys were going through a storm. Hold on, my sheet to the fire. They waited for the oh, Jesus. They waited for God to pass. Did you hear what I said? I said they waited for God to pass through. God's telling me to tell you, you don't have to wait for Him to pass through. Because He said, if you knock, I shall enter. So God is telling me, if you have something today, that you have a need today, don't be shy. Make that step of faith and get to the altars. I don't care if it's heart disease. I don't care if it's cancer. God is a healer. He's a redeemer. He's a way maker. For he is God. So when you see him, when you know him, when you truly, truly, truly know who God is, there's no stopping you. When I get fault, after I pray for somebody, I was like, thank you, Jesus, I got through. And then I tell that thing that's taking me, hey, I'm a man of God. Go back home where you came from. Yeah, yeah. And if you come back again, I'm going to send you back to the pits of hell where you came from. Yeah, so see what I'm telling you today? Are you going to be like the nine, get your little healing, and go on? Are you going to be like the one 
that's going to glorify Him, that's going to fall upon your face and praise Him for the little things. Yes. Let me tell you something. I'm thinking right now, when I do things for my wife, and she praises me and she tells me, hey, honey, I'm so glad you did the dishes this morning on Sunday morning. I'm so glad you did this. You know what? It makes me want to do it more. Don't y'all think God's the same way? When when He gives you a little 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 break and, and the pain's gone, or or He gives you somebody slides you a five dollar bill and says, "Hey, let me bless you." Or, or when I went to a service, I wasn't even supposed to speak it. I was just visiting, and, and I thank God because the man of God there gave me the mic, and somebody slid me a Holy Ghost shake. And I ain't talking about no little five dollar bill either. Don't you know I get out of the car and say, "Thank you, Jesus." Because I went on faith. I didn't have gas money. We didn't have food money that day. I just said, God, you told me to go, so I'm going. So what I'm telling you today, are you going to be like the nine or the one? Are you going to actually praise Him and worship Him for the little things? I know we're going to praise Him when we get here with cancer. But are you going to praise Him when you get over the cold? Are you going to praise Him for the storm that you're going through? You gonna praise him in the storm? Oh no, my sheep are gonna see that. God just put in my spirit right now, Paul and Silas. They were doing God's work. They were preaching His word, and they got put in jail. But guess what they did? They praised Him anyway. Their shackles fell off. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. And guess what? The men out there where the shackles fell off, they could have left. They could have been like the tenth nine, right? But they stayed like the, the one. And guess what? As they were going out, they went home with the jailer, sat with him that night, and he got saved and his family got saved. Don't think the storm that you're going through is not a reason God has you there. Did you hear what I said? The storm you're going through is a reason. There's a reason behind it. Whether it's to help save somebody, 